welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, also known as Made in the Moment. And today I'm going to be showing you all of the knit and crochet projects that I finished in June and July. I feel like it's been a while since I've done one of these like sit down and chat to the camera kind of things. So I'm excited to get into it and start telling you about everything. I do wanna preface this by saying, this is my job at this point. I do pretty much full time like content creation, pattern designing. During the academic year, I am a master's student. So I kind of take advantage of the summer when I have the time. And some of these pieces were pretty quick makes because they're mesh, they're smaller, they're summer pieces. So it looks like a lot, but I will kind of take you through the process of everything. I just wanted to get that out of the way because I never want anyone to feel like they're not doing enough, they're not making enough. Since I have a lot of things to get through, I'm going to go through everything kind of in chronological order and just tell you a little bit about the project. I'll add some pictures and videos of me like wearing the piece and just sort of go from there. If there's any patterns, they will be linked below. So the first project I finished in June was this two-tone bralette. I have a free tutorial for this on my channel. So if you're interested in that, then make sure you go check it out. This is the first time that I experimented with surface crochet and I'm really excited with how it turned out. I think it's really cool. The yarn that I used for this was a linen, I think it was a linen rayon blend. This is just a nice little basic bralette. I like that it's two colors. I think that's fun. There's a lot you can do with it. And this was, you know, a really quick project to make, but I'm really happy with it. I like colors that are going on. They kind of remind me of the trans flag and that wasn't really on purpose, but they look great together. It's kind of fun because one of the first projects that I ever made when I started crocheting was I attempted to crochet a bralette and I really was stumped by it for a while. So it's nice to be able to revisit a project like this and kind of design my own thing. That is the two-tone bralette. I'm really happy with how it turned out. The next project I finished was this cute little boucle crop top. I wanted to do ribbing on the neckline and the sleeves as well, but I ran out of this yarn. It was thrifted somewhere and I just didn't have any left. But this was one of those projects that I picked up when I just wanted a quick, like instant gratification project to work on. I absolutely love the color. I love the way it fits. It is simply too hot for me to try this on right now. So I will put some pictures in of it so you can see what it looks like on me. I always love working with boucle. It's just such a fun texture. If you've been around for a little while, you have heard me talk about my friend Alana, also known as Ball. Balls of Yarn. And she has what some might say is a yarn hoarding problem, but it works out well for me because when she goes through her yarn and wants to get rid of some of it, she gives it to me. And so that is where I got this boucle. It didn't have a tag on it, so I'm not sure exactly where it's from, but I have had a lot of good success thrifting boucle, actually. So if you're interested in that, go look around at secondhand yarn stores or thrift stores. If you have never done that before, I actually have a whole video on how I started sourcing some yarn secondhand. So if you wanna check that out, I will link it up here and also below. But yeah, I really liked this project. I unfortunately have not been able to wear it because it has been very, very hot and humid ever since I finished it, but I'm excited to get some use out of it in the winter. I can already kind of envision some fun outfits with it. The next top I made was kind of a little collab project. It didn't intentionally start like that, but if you've been around for a little while, you've probably seen some of my dinosaur patterns. And one of my followers, her account is called Scribble Tree Creative, and her name is LJ. She made two of my patterns, and then she also made her own graph for a Triceratops, and she was kind enough to share it with me. I made a couple tweaks, it was already really great. And then I made this top, which honestly is probably well, I was gonna say it's my favorite dinosaur one that I've made so far, but then I just started thinking about the other ones and I, I don't think that I can choose a favorite. But I like the way this one fits me the best. It is really hot, but I will I will put it on for you because I feel like it's it's worth it for this, for this one. But here it is. I love the contrasting colors with the Triceratops and the ribbing kind of contrasting with this light pink. And I also, experimented with a little bit of surface crochet on here, which was really fun. I used up the last of my Schitt's Creek acrylic yarn, which is probably my favorite acrylic yarn that I've worked with. It's a lot softer than a lot of brands. Although the, for some reason the white was like really scratchy. I don't know why, cause they're all the same yarn. I love this one. It's so fun and I can't wait to wear it more 
again, when it's not so hot. There's a couple pieces that I've made in June and July that I was actually able to wear and some that I actually kind of have gotten a lot of wear out of, but for the most part with the humidity, I just cannot bring myself to choose a knit piece or a crochet piece over like a thin cotton tank top. This one I'm really excited about. I have some ideas for what dinosaur I want to do next. I'm leaning towards either a water dinosaur, a stegosaurus, or maybe some kind of raptor. Of course, there's like infinite dinosaur possibilities, so I'm really excited about that. But for the time being, I have the Triceratops, the Brontosaurus, and the T-Rex. And I actually have a knit version of the T-Rex kind of in the works. You'll see that a little bit later on in the video. So stick around if that's something you're interested in. But I need to take this off, it's too hot. So give me a second. Next up is, surprise, surprise, another vest. This one is super chunky and actually has a really fun story behind it. First, I'll tell you a little bit about the vest. I knit this with Malabrigio Rasta yarn and it is just absolutely lovely to work with. Unfortunately, it's, I wanna say $30 a skein or tw like 28 or something. It's pretty pricey. It's not something that I'm gonna work with often, especially because it is like roving. I've worn this a little bit and it hasn't pilled yet, which is I think a good sign compared to some of the other roving pieces that I've worn one time, and then they have all of this pilling and stuff like that. So I'm gonna wear it a little more and I'll get back to you on it. But to me, it's worth the money every now and then. In terms of a pattern for this one, I did freehand it, but I am currently writing a basic knit vest pattern that you can substitute any yarn and any needles that you want. You will be able to make something like this soon. I'm kind of writing that at the moment and working on a second sample. Stay tuned for that if you're interested. Unfortunately, no pattern yet, though it is pretty basic. And if you really wanted to find something, there's I'm sure tons of other things that are very similar to this. But the story behind this is one day randomly, I was sitting in a coffee shop doing my little work on my computer. I think I was writing a pattern or something. And I check my Instagram DMs and I have a message from Jared Elner, who, if you don't know, is Emma Chamberlain's stylist. And basically he said something like, hey, I love all of your work. I am looking to style one of my clients for a late night TV show appearance and would love to work with you on a piece. So I was like, this is really cool. I've never done anything like this. Sounds great. So I went back and forth with him and his team for a few days. We decided on these colors. We decided on this specific yarn. I made it really quickly and ended up taking a trip to New York City to drop it off. I didn't have to do that. I could have mailed it, but I was waiting for an excuse to go into the city for a really long time. I have a lot of friends out in the city and it was really, really fun. I absolutely loved it. I was there for two days, dropped off the vest and she didn't end up wearing it, which is, you know, that's just how it is. I'm just grateful that they sent it back to me because I love the way this fits me and selfishly now I just get to wear it and keep it and whatever, but I'm pretty sure she tried this on, but they went with a completely different kind of style for the look. So I don't hold anything against them. There is a whole conversation that we could potentially have at some point about the exploitation of small businesses for celebrity use and just kind of how it's normal to expect like really short deadlines, very low pay, very little pay just for exposure. I really would love to get into doing video essays because that's what I spend most of my time on YouTube consuming. So I have some ideas about things. I don't really want to make anyone mad. So I'm trying to start off with something that's not too spicy, not too much of a hot take. But if you have anything that you wanna hear my thoughts on, I'm open to suggestions and I will take in all of these thoughts that you might have and see kind of what I can construct. But I think in terms of small business owners and especially handmade goods, just not being respected by celebrities, celebrity stylists, and also by brands. So we'll get into that at some point, not today. All of that to say is I am incredibly grateful for the opportunity to make something for her and I'm happy that I got it back. So that was everything for June. Now moving on to July. The next thing I made is the Adina cardigan by Jada from Mrs. Moon in Heaven. I'm also gonna put this one on because just holding it up, I feel like you're not really getting the full picture of it. So I'm gonna put it on really quick. Here's what it looks like on. I actually really like it with this outfit. I think it's just a fun, lightweight little thing to throw over something. I made this with cotton, so it's really nice and airy and breathable. I used the Hobby Cotton King cone. If you watched my yarn stash video, then you saw it in there. 
and I said that I was going to sell it because I didn't think I would use yarn that thin and I have made two things out of that yarn since so I'm glad I kept a couple of those. This is a great pattern. It's so cute. It worked up really quick. I did go up a size because I used yarn that's thinner than what was recommended in the pattern. And something very sad happened. I made a mistake on the sleeves because I refused to count. It's not Jada's fault. She gave stitch counts and I just simply did not count. So I have to go back and redo this sleeve, but I always hate having to do stuff like that. So I've been putting it off, but this sleeve is just so perfect that I really need to go do this one. I think it's a fun piece. I am super into the ballet core, like light girly aesthetic. I think it's fun to contrast that with my more like masculine style that I do a lot of the time. But yeah, this, this piece, I highly recommend this pattern and all of Jada's patterns. She is one of my crochet friends. I loved making this pattern and I know that you will too. There's also a short sleeve version and a matching bralette if that's something you're interested in. If you have seen anything on my Instagram or TikTok anytime in the past couple months, you have probably seen this set that I was working on. I am absolutely in love with this. It is not something that I really thought that I would actually get a lot of wear out of because it's so bright and so over the top, but I have found a lot of different ways to style these three pieces. So the first thing that I made was these shorts and I'm working on a pattern for this whole set. So we'll get there. I'm just not exactly sure the best way to do the shaping for the shorts because my body type is like very straight on the front and the back and the sides. And I'm just not quite sure how to do all of the shaping for people that have different sized bodies than I do. So I'm, I'm getting to that, but it will be made to measure. It will be size inclusive. I will not be releasing it until I feel confident that anyone of any size could make it. This yarn is from Hans Design from Moa, who is another one of my crochet friends, crochet internet friends. She sent this to me just as a gift because she's so kind and I am so grateful. This is Merino wool. This is the Iconoclast. I used four skeins of the yarn for all three of these pieces. Um, obviously the shorts used the most yarn out of all of them. I did a folded waistband with twisted rib. Crazy, I love how it looks. There's also a little elastic in there to help the shorts stay up. Unfortunately, I have tired myself out by trying on some of the other things. So I'm just gonna put in some pictures and videos to the side while I talk about the rest of the pieces. The next piece I made though was this really cute, tiny cropped vest. This will also be, you know, included in all of the patterns, but I like the two by two rib on the, the armholes and the bottom. And then I also did a folded neckline here. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this. I was inspired by Loopy Studio, always my inspiration. I always love everything she makes, but she posted this little cropped vest and I could not stop thinking about it. And I was like, I need something like that. So, that's how this came to be. And then the final piece of this set, which actually I will try on because I don't have to get up to try it on. The final piece of this set is this cute bralette. I made this because I wanted to be able to wear this tiny little crop without worrying about my underboob coming out or my nipples being seen or whatever. And this is pretty much just your average normal crochet bralette. But the one thing I did slightly differently is I made the straps go over the shoulders I just like the way that it sits like this. I feel like it fits me better and it doesn't irritate like the back of my neck. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about that, but I have, these two pieces are knit, this is crocheted. So, you know, if you're just a knitter, then you can make this whole set. And if you're just a crocheter, you can make the bralette and pair it with something else. I'm also planning on coming out with a kind of basic crochet vest. And eventually I probably would like to come out with a pair of crochet shorts kind of similar to this because I know that my audience is quite varied in terms of who crochets and who knits, and I wouldn't want people to not be able to make any of my designs just because they don't know how to do one or the other. That being said though, if you're interested in learning how to knit, I do have a whole beginner knitting series on my channel. There are three videos right now, and I have several others filmed that I just kind of have to go through and edit. So if you're interested and if you've been wanting to learn to knit, then I recommend you check those out. All right, we're nearing the end. There's just a few things left. So like I kind of mentioned earlier, I am working on a knit version of the T-Rex top. 
that I have. With knitting, I wanted to make some of the details in duplicate stitching, which is a great idea in theory, but also it means that that's the step I'm gonna put off forever. So I have everything done with this, except I have to add the teeth and some of the little shading details. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I think there's a couple tweaks that I want to make before I send this to testing in terms of changing the graph around a little bit. But this is the smaller sized graph and then there will be a bigger, more detailed one for larger sizes. And if you can't tell, I've been on a huge vest kick recently. And so of course I made this a tiny little cropped vest. If you're interested in testing this, then keep an eye on my Instagram. I will put out a tester call sometime. I unfortunately don't know. If I know by the time I edit and upload this video, I'll put something on the screen. But yeah, I love how this turned out. This blue yarn is from Stitch and Story. It's their Lil Merino. They gifted it to me along with a lot of other wonderful, gorgeous yarn, and I have been kind of working through all of it. And I'm really, really excited about how this looks. I think it's just a great kind of material for a vest. And then if you've been around for a while, you might remember my Baja Blast sweater. And this light brown is the other color in the Baja Blast like checkered sweater. And so I'm just kind of using up the last little bits of that. And then this brown is, I don't know, some yarns from my stash because I do a lot of secondhand yarn shopping. I have no idea where they came from. But yeah, that's the T-Rex tank. And then finally, I have been really into mesh crochet recently. And I do have a mesh knit that I'm working on. I'm working on the Pure Mesh Pullover by James Watts and I really, really enjoyed making it. I got to the part where I joined the front and the back panels and I have to add the sleeves and I just hit a wall and I haven't picked up that project in a while, but I do wanna get back to it because I love the project. So while I'm editing this, I'm realizing that I did not press record on my microphone for the next three or four minutes. It's not that bad, it's just the audio from my camera instead of my nice microphone but that's why there is a sudden drop off in audio quality. And I'll try these on just so you can see because they're kind of hard to see just from me holding them up. I am going to be working on a pattern for these. It will be a free YouTube tutorial. So keep an eye out for that. Subscribe to my channel if you don't wanna miss it, all of that good stuff. But this one I made with a 15 millimeter hook and a weight four cotton yarn that I bought a while ago. I really like how this fits. I love the layering possibilities with this. And then this is the other one. This is the same hobby cotton yarn as the Adina cardigan that I made. Yeah, I really like how these fit. They're kind of looser. They're fun for layering. I'm working on a bralette right now. Actually, this is my sample for the pattern that I'm writing. And I think it's just going to pair really well underneath this one. The pinks are just different enough that they'll kind of stand out. If you follow me on TikTok, you may have seen my apology video. Basically, I forgot to include my knit socks in my monthly wrap up video that I posted on TikTok and Instagram. It just completely slipped my mind. So I'll just insert my apology video here so you can hear what I have to say. By this time, a lot of you have probably seen the video that I posted yesterday claiming that I was showing you every single knit and crochet project that I finished in the month of July. Unfortunately, that was a lie. I want to apologize to each and every one of you for spreading false information and lies. I actually neglected to include one project, my knit socks. From the bottom of my heart, I am deeply sorry and I hope that you can forgive me. But of course I wanted to include it in this video, so these are my knit socks. This is the first pair of socks I've ever made. I was really not sure if I would finish both of them, but they were actually a really great travel project. I went on like a five day trip out of town and I didn't finish them completely while I was gone because I was doing other things as well. But they were really small, really easy to work on, lots of stockinette knitting. For this, I used the Paintbox Sock Yarn in the color, I think it's called like Purple Zebra or something, but it's just like a self-striping yarn. So I just kind of knit, I didn't have to do any color changes and it has this cool pattern. They also have some that are actual blocks of stripes or Fair Isle designs that look really cool. I knit them from the cuff to the toe using 2.75 millimeter double pointed needles which I thought would be really tricky to adjust to, but honestly, I found them pretty nice. And the pattern I followed for these was the Paintbox Essential Sock Pattern. I think it's a pretty good beginner-friendly pattern. There were a couple things that I hadn't really done before, you know, obviously like shaping the heel and the this part's called the gusset. That was a little bit tricky, but the instructions are laid out so well. You pretty much just need to know how to decrease 
I am curious to try knitting from the toe up next time. A few people recommended that because there is kind of a seam on the inside of the sock. If you can see, there's just a little bit of a seam at the toe. And for me, it honestly doesn't really bother me that much, but I know some people are more sensitive to kind of having something like that on their toe. So I'm gonna try doing that next. I will say though, even though I enjoyed knitting these, I never gravitate towards really tiny needles. They always make my hands hurt more than medium sized needles. I think my sweet spot is five to six millimeter knitting needles and there's no way that I can make socks on those. But yeah, these are my socks. Um, Anna caught my mistake, crochet by AK. She messaged me like at, at the end of the day when I had posted my July projects video and was like, oh my God, you forgot the socks. I'm glad she caught it before I finished making this video so that I could include it in this one. And I think I'm going to make a second what I made in July video for all of my other platforms because I really do, I do like having a digital record of all of my projects. I would love to be the kind of person that can take notes or like write down in a little notebook what my project was, when I started it, when I finished it, all of that kind of information. But I just forget. I've never really like found a system that works for me. So making these like monthly videos and on YouTube, the bi-monthly videos, I can look back and see what I was making at any time. And honestly, some of the projects kind of trigger other memories that I have, good and bad, but I can look at it and go, oh yeah, that project I worked on in March and that's when this was happening. And oh, now I remember all of this stuff. I like it. I think it's fun. Yeah, and I can't believe that I was so scared of knitting socks for so long because they honestly were not that bad and they were really fun. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, comment below what is a project that you have been scared to try. So mine was socks and I tried it and now I'm sure there's other things that I'm gonna think of, but what's a project or technique that you have been putting off learning how to make because you're nervous about how it's gonna go? That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.